It starts with elementary school. I remember the icebreakers our teacher would do every year. That goes something like this. Who here's favorite color is red? Oh, Sarah, you like red? Well, so does Tom. You should go talk to each other. Who here's parents are from Mexico? Oh, Sophia, your parents are from Mexico? Well, so are Isabella's. You should go be friends. I know it feels natural for us to be friends with people who are similar to us. I mean, look to your left and look to your right. Are these people who you have things in common with, who you probably usually hang out with? And if you sat by someone new, did you even say hi to them? I remember sitting in that classroom and thinking to myself, do I raise my hand? I mean, my mother was raised as a Catholic in Mexico, but my father was raised as a Muslim in Yemen. And I was born here in America. So what now? I thought, maybe this is a one-time thing. Maybe this will just pass. But throughout elementary school, throughout middle school, throughout high school, and even throughout college, I kept feeling this isolation. I thought, maybe something was wrong with my hair. Or maybe I just smell funny? But it wasn't until my first standardized exam that I realized why I always felt so alone. It was the CRCT. I was bubbling in my student name, my student ID, the date, and then I see this portion that says ethnicity. And the order goes white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and at the very bottom, other. I thought to myself, wow, am I other? <laughs> Is that really how people see me? A few months go by and we get back the exam. And with that comes the demographics of the students who took this test. And on the back of the pamphlet, I see this pie chart that's labeled ethnicities. And you see all these chunks of this pie chart, and then you see this tiny little sliver that says 1% of students consider themselves other. 1%. Imagine having nothing in common with anyone in this room. That's how I felt. I panicked and I thought, how am I going to make friends being so different? At the time, I thought I had a choice. I could fit into these groups or I could try something new. I mean, how hard could it be to fit in? Everyone else does it. But when I tried to hang out with the Hispanics, I wasn't Hispanic enough. When I tried to hang out with the Arabs, I wasn't Arab enough. And when I tried to hang out with the Americans, I wasn't American enough. I became so frustrated. Why can't I find anyone like me? I even sat in the cafeteria for months by myself. And occasionally, because I was a teenager, I was pretty dramatic. So I'd even sit in the bathroom stall and play doodle jump by myself. I remember just feeling so alone and just so confused. Why couldn't I find people who were like me? I now realized I didn't have a choice. The only option was to talk to someone different than me. I'm not going to tell you it was easy, though. Going up to people who look nothing like me, act nothing like me, and dress nothing like me, it was intimidating. But I knew the pain of feeling alone, of feeling like I didn't belong. And I never wanted another kid to feel that way. And through being a friend to others, I knew I could make that difference. So whenever I got nervous, I think to myself, 
if I don't want another kid to feel the way I have, someone has to start breaking the cycle. So I took a deep breath, and I started stumbling through these conversations. I remember meeting a girl named Sarah. We sat by each other in physics class, so we kind of had an idea of who we were. And one day we decided, let's go grab coffee. Let's get to know each other. Our conversation started out pretty basic, like, wow, isn't the weather great today? And don't you just love Atlanta traffic? And then we started to dive in a little deeper. She started telling me about the way she was raised, her culture, her background, her religion. And then things changed when she leaned into me and she said, Karima, don't you think gay marriage is a little strange? My eyes got really big and I thought, oh my gosh, am I about to have an argument with the person I just met? <laughs> yes, I was, and I did. <laughs> what was supposed to be a 15 minute meetup turned into a three hour ferocious debate. But before we left, she stopped me and she said, I know this might sound a little strange, but thank you for talking with me. Not a lot of people have made me think about why I believe what I believe. That's when I realized our problem. We're taught to befriend people who are similar to us, but that's precisely what's disconnecting us from people who aren't. Having conversations with people different than me took me out of my comfort zone. It introduced me to new ideas, and it made me see my own ideas from a new point of view. It's not easy, but I know it's something that we need to do. Because you see, our worlds consist of the relationships we have with those around us. So, the more different people we surround ourselves with, the bigger our world becomes. My world used to be, I'm a female who's Mexican, Yemeni, American, and who's studying to be an engineer. But now I am more than those assigned titles. I'm the combination of the personalities, backgrounds, and experiences of those I have met. My world has expanded merely through stories and conversations. Because you see, when we stay friends, with people who are like us, we learn the same thing over and over and over and over again. We become stagnant. We start alienating people, not because we don't care about them, but because we're so stuck in our own world. It's our obligation to acknowledge the world we were born into, but it's also our obligation to push and fight that ease of making friends with people similar to us. Because you see, when you do that, it's no longer us versus them, but it's we together on the same team. If we had CEOs of all backgrounds, if we had senators of all backgrounds, if we had presidents of all backgrounds, think of how amazing our world would be now. I deliberately did this for years, making friends with people different than me. And a common phrase I kept hearing was, wow, Krima, you're so different and you're so easy to open up to. And I genuinely believe it's because I always listened to those who were different than me. I felt their pains and I felt their passions. I created a larger pool of understanding within myself to share with others. Because meeting people different than me was more than just new knowledge. It was a new understanding. I'll never know what it's like to be someone else. 
but through hearing and feeling the experiences of those different than me, I became better at empathizing. Because as we expand our world, we start exercising our empathy. Differences in people stop being separations from you, but an integral part to how you feel and understand. I remember asking myself, how did I get here, and why don't other people do this? And I discovered it's comforting to know people who are like you, but it's limiting to only know people who are like you. Empathy taught me that together we could be uniters. Empathy unites all of us. You need to meet new people to reach your full potential. You'll be better at understanding people, communicating with them, and connecting them. You'll become a leader who can understand, unite, and understand anyone and everyone you work with. From my experience, being able to understand people and unite them, I was able to co-found my own startup teach hundreds of kids about robotics and engineering, and facilitate student activism. You don't need to find the cure for cancer or develop a new clean resource to make a difference in this world. You can make an impact by meeting someone new, someone different than you. So the next time you're at the dining hall, Think to yourself, are you going to sit by someone you already know? Someone who you might have things in common with? Because imagine being at a dinner table where each person is from a different country than you, a different race than you, a different religion than you, a different sexual orientation than you, a different age than you. How much would you learn? And how differently do you think you'd see the world then? Making this difference starts with you. Yes, you'll get into arguments. Yes, you'll have some awkward situations. And yes, you'll probably say the wrong thing sometimes. But once you open up about what you believe and why you believe it, two people can leave those conversations feeling a little lighter and yet a little more whole. So, do it for you. Do it for your community. Do it for your kids, our next generation. So it could be your child walking into their elementary school and hearing the teacher say, oh, Veronica, you're Mexican? Well, Mohammed's Yemeni. You should go be friends. Thank you. <laughs>